Dr. Sage here. Welcome back to our discussion on viruses and prions. We're going to conclude this discussion by talking about prions and other non-cellular infectious agents. By the end of this video, you should be able to list three non-cellular infectious agents besides viruses and be able to state what are prions and what organ of the body they infect. Spongiform encephalitis is implicated in chronic persistent disease in humans and animals. The brain tissue removed from those affected resemble a sponge. Prions are a common feature of spongy form encephalitis. Distinct protein fibrils deposited in brain tissues affect animal cells. For example, creutzfeldt jakob disease affects the central nervous system of humans. It causes gradual degeneration and death. It's transmissible by an unknown mechanism, and several animals are victims of similar diseases. For example, you can have scrapie in sheep, mink, and elk, or bovine spongy form encephalitis in cows. Here you can see some images of a normal brain or normal brain tissue compared to an individual who's affected by this disease in their whole brain or in their brain tissues. Now, in regards to prion infection, the exact mode of infection is unknown. The protein composition of prions has revolutionized ideas of what can constitute an infectious agent. Questions remain about how prions can replicate given that they have no nucleic acid. So here's an example of what can happen during a prion infection. So let's say that we start with an endogenous normal protein and it encounters a disease-causing form of this protein, the prion of this protein. When they interact with each other, the endogenous protein is then converted into the disease-causing protein. The disease-causing proteins may arise spontaneously in brain tissue, especially if a mutant form of the protein is present or it may originate from misfolded proteins consumed in food that eventually find their way into brain tissue. We also have satellite viruses. These are dependent on other viruses for replication. For example, adeno-associated virus. It was originally thought that it could only replicate in cells infected with the adenovirus. However, it's now found to infect cells infected with other viruses or that have had their DNA disrupted through other means. We can also have viroids. That's a virus-like agent that's a parasite of plants. It's about one-tenth the size of an average virus. It's composed only of naked strands of RNA. It lacks a capsid or other type of coating. It's a significant pathogen in economically important plants, like tomatoes, potatoes, cucumbers, and citrus trees. Here's an example of potato spindle tuber viroid that's infected these potatoes. All right, this is your introduction to prions and other non-cellular infectious agents. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.